Welcome to Fate Moves, an Iron Sworn Starforge podcast. I'm your host, Jason Leichert, and I'll be playing a solo co op campaign of Iron Sworn Starforged. Starforged is an extension of the original Iron Sworn tabletop role playing game developed by Sean Tompkin. While Iron Sworn takes place in a pseudo Viking setting, Starforged takes place in a futuristic sci fi setting where humanity has left the Milky Way and traveled to another galaxy named the Forge. In Iron Sworn Starforge, you play as a spacer who is exploring, adventuring, solving mysteries, overcoming challenges, or whatever else you can think of in a unique, robust, and flexible sci fi setting. The setting can fully be determined by the player or can be decided by random dice rolls using the oracle tables in the Starforge source material. Before we get into other portions of the game and start playing the game, I want to go over the basics in a Session Zero, and I'll be breaking Session Zero into multiple episodes to make it more easily digestible. We're going to start with the gameplay basics. The game takes place about 200 years after humanity has fled from the Milky Way and arrives at the Forge. The Forge is 1700 light years above the galactic plane. So what will we need to start playing? Generally, you're going to want two 10 sided dice and we're going to call these your challenge dice. We're going to want one six sided die and that's our action die. Optionally, you can use a second pair of 10 sided die to use as Oracle dice. You'll need a character sheet the rulebook, the asset cards, and the Starforge play kit, which includes reference sheets and other worksheets. And I also recommend a journal or some way to record what's happened in your game to keep track of the fiction and the story. Now the forge where we're gonna play on, um, you know, there are four main regions to the forge. There's the Terminus, where people first arrived at the forge, the Outlands, which is deeper in the galaxy, it's more sparse, there's less settlements and uncharted paths. Then we have the expanse, which are the really the far flung reaches of the forge. And it's generally they're disconnected settlements that are all isolated and kind of on their own. And then we have the void, which is the isolated stars and large swaths of nothingness at the edge of the galaxy. So how do we play in the forge? How do we play our game in Iron in Ironsworn uh, Starforged? So it's really comes down. It's a very simple, very simple process. We envision our fiction. We choose the proper mechanic and then take action. This is normally going to be a dice roll. And then we reconcile the outcome of that with the fiction once again. So a, our role in this, uh, you know, in Star Forged is we players, we play the role of a spacer, a spacer, an adventurous soul that swears vows on iron to undertake quests and adventures. Now, we're going to get more into character creation in a later episode when we create our character for this game. But there's five main stats that you're going to have um, for your character, edge, heart, iron, shadow and wits. And these generally equate to things like dexterity, uh, charisma, physical prowess and strength, um, stealthiness or deception, and then intelligence and wisdom. Right now, we have these different stats and are we're also going to have what are called assets, right? So players are going to have assets, which are aspects to the characters. Assets consist of many things uh, such as your paths, which are classes companions, ship modules, upgrades, and, and deeds. And part of our character that we're also going to have, we'll have what's called momentum. Um, it's an expendable resource. And we have health and spirit. Now, health and health is basically your hit points, and spirit is mental strength, mental fortitude. When either of these hit zero, bad things can happen. Characters also have a supply meter, which is a quantitative metric for the supplies on your ship and your character. So when you play, when a situation arises, the character will envision the fiction and determine what move they want to use to resolve the situation. A move is a predefined action or predetermined action, and there are many different moves from many different situations. Um, moves vary on the situation, uh, such as, you know, is it a progress move to gain XP? Is it a move to swear a bond? Is it combat? Is it adventure? There's moves that fit all of these different types of scenarios. Each move has a trigger, which is a condition that's met by something that's happening in your fiction. So depending on the move, the player will roll their two 10 sided challenge dice and then they'll roll the action die. Now, each die D10 is counted separately as a one to 10 value. The goal is to have a roll on the action die that is higher than the rolls on the challenge dice. The player will add any modifiers to their action dice roll. When the dice is rolled, the player will add their applicable stat for the roll and then add any bonuses that may come from an asset. If the player beats both challenge dice, it's called a strong hit. You succeed and something extra happens, something probably beneficial. 
If the player beats one challenge dice, it is a weak hit. You succeed, but your victory may be short-lived, there may be a complication, but ultimately something negative comes from your success, or maybe there's a twist in the story. If the player doesn't beat either challenge dice, this is called a miss. A miss is generally bad. You failed at what you were doing. There's a further complication that you may have to uh, pay the price, uh, which is a different move for negative outcomes. You may also need to endure harm or suffer stress. There are consequences to failing um, when you when you fail on, a, on making a move and there will be repercussions. Now, to gain experience points, the player needs to complete vows and complete boxes, which are represented by four ticks per box on their legacy tracks. There are three legacy tracks. These are for quests, bonds, and discoveries, and each track consists of 10 boxes. Like these legacy tracks, vows are represented by 10 boxes, as are combat tracks. To fill up a box, up to four ticks are used to complete the box. Completing boxes increases your chances of success, because we have to make a move to complete vows and combat. Progress moves, such as when you complete vows, are not rolled the same as normal moves. The challenge dice are rolled and compared to the number of completed boxes for the relevant vow or combat track. These can also result in strong hits, weak hits, and misses. If you're not sure where to go in your game or what's next, you can use one of the many oracle tables to help generate what has happened, will happen, or is currently occurring. The oracles can also help guide you with yes or no answers or additional complications or twists to your story. And that's really the basics of the game. Now we know a little bit more about the overall setting and the gist of how to play. Thanks for listening to this podcast. I'm excited to continue and start playing the game soon. I hope you all join me in this adventure. It'll be great if you'd like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again. Until next time.